Hello, and thank you for joining us, Friendship Christian Church, virtual Sunday school class. Uh, we will be in Lesson 78 of Isaiah. We'll be beginning in chapter 35 with verse 1. Let us have a word of prayer before we get started. Father, we just pray that as we go through your scripture, that you will lead us and guide us by the Holy Spirit, and that you'll bring us to proper conclusions. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Chapter 35, verse 1. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus. Uh, the prophet Isaiah now is turning to the time of the millennium. The millennium is the time that Jesus will rule for a thousand years. A thousand years. He's going to come. And when he does, the whole world will rejoice and blossom. The whole world will be what it was intended to be. A paradise. A paradise that Jesus brings down. That Jesus brings down. And so on that day... Uh, forest will flourish. Uh, there's going to be a, a way of holiness that's going to open up, and the tribulation period will finally end and open up this thousand-year millennial kingdom. So in chapter 34, we read about the judgment of God on a people who were alienated from God the power of the beast, the great tribulation. And in this chapter, Isaiah takes us to the end of that tribulation. Isaiah takes us to the blessings of God on those who chose to follow him. Now, dramatic changes in the land are going to take place. And this falls right into line. Isaiah falls right into line with the book of Revelation. Uh, the desert, the parched land will be glad because it was destroyed during Armageddon. And the wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus. Now in Revelation chapter 20, beginning in verse 4, we get this. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. That's the beginning of the millennium. And that happens after, after everything had been destroyed during the tribulation. So this is where Isaiah picks up his vision. Falls right in line with what we see in the book of Revelation. Then in verse 2. It will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Lebanon was known for its great cedars. Carmel and Sharon were on the coastline, and they were known as being a fertile land. And they will see. Israel will recognize this new earth's fruitfulness when Jesus comes and the church will be delivered from the troubles of the world during the wrath of God on the earth, during that great tribulation. The church will now be blessed and comforted and the people will be singing, the Christians 
will be singing, rejoicing in the Lord. You see, the ones that were killed during the Great Tribulation and had their heads cut off, they're going to be resurrected. They're going to be there. That's going to be the first resurrection. There's going to be a lot of people who came to Christ during the Tribulation that are still alive. They're going to be dancing and singing and rejoicing. The glory of the Lord will be upon the earth in the presence of God's people. And this goes in line with Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. During this reign with Christ, Satan will be chained. There's not going to be anything harmful or negative in the world anymore. The weather will be perfect. The crops will grow abundantly. The light of the world will be present with mankind. All of nature will be opening in cooperation with Jesus, our King. So we've got a thousand years of perfect rest from evil. Christians that is spoken of as the millennium reign that Christ opens the earth is going to be those who became Christians during the Great Tribulation. And look at uh, Revelation 20, verses 1 through 3. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a great chain. He sees the dragon, that ancient serpent who's the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations any more until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. Satan will be chained and locked away for those thousand years. Uh, there's not going to be any evil anywhere in the world. And uh, Isaiah 35, verse 3, Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Isaiah is saying, this is the source of comfort what I'm giving you. Right now, you're afraid. Right now, you got Assyrians coming. And I'm, I'm seeing I'm seeing more occupations coming. I'm seeing Jerusalem is going to be taken into bondage. Let this be a word of comfort to you. Let it strengthen your hands. Steady your knees. Stand firm in the promise of God. The future of Israel's international role is going to be to serve and encourage discouraged people that will be going through the tribulation. Source of comfort. The book of Revelation is that. It's a source of peace and comfort for people who are going to go through the tribulation period. Verse 4. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. This happened twice. Jesus came to save us, save us from our sins. God is coming to save us and bring us a new, a new heaven and a new earth without a Satan in it. The vengeance of God is going to furnish the means to redeem the long oppressed people, the people of Israel, Christians at large. Those who are strong must help those who have a fearful heart. Be strong in the power of Jesus and his might. Encourage those who are weary and fearful. The best way to encourage them is take them into the scripture. Take them into Isaiah. Take them into the book of Revelation. It falls right in line. Then in verse 5, 
Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. This prophecy was fulfilled in part by Jesus, who healed people when he ministered on the earth and did miracles. And he did that for the exact number of years that the great tribulation is going to take place. He ministered that way for about three, three and a half years. The great tribulation is going to run about three, three and a half years. And after that time, he's coming back. The larger fulfillment will be when he comes back and reigns for those thousand years. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the children who are going to be born to those who go into the millennium, many of those children are going to grow up during those thousand years and have children who grow up during those thousand years, and they will not follow Christ. They will not follow Christ. Even in a perfect environment, they choose not to follow Christ. Just like the angels who were in heaven in a perfect environment, I chose to follow Satan. And these people that are born during that time that decide not to follow Jesus, after that thousand years is over, Satan is going to be unchained. He's going to be released from the abyss. And it's those people that he's going to deceive. Look at the Revelation chapter 20, verse 7 and 8. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out and deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and to gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sand on the seashore. And you can see during a thousand years, a lot of generations are going to grow up. And just like the angels did. In a perfect environment, you're going to have some who will not follow Jesus. Uh, in uh, verses 6 and 7 of chapter 35 of Isaiah, water uh, was and is a precious commodity in Israel. In the millennium, there's not going to be any scarcity. Now, during the Great Tribulation, during the judgments, a lot of the water got dried up, just disappeared. So look at... Uh, Isaiah chapter 35, verse 6. Then will the lame leap like a deer, and mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. God's restoration in the millennial age includes physical restoration to the afflicted. Jesus' first coming gave a foretaste of that future day. The devil is the author of everything that's bad, everything that's bad. And since he'll be chained, there'll be no one who cannot walk, talk, see, or hear, and all of the resources, like water and the crops, everything's going to be restored into a perfect state, just like it was in heaven before Satan and his angels got thrown out. Uh, verse 7. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling spring. In the haunts where jackals once lay grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. The rocky crags normally inhabited by jackals are to become splashy meadows. Everything is going to go back to what it was supposed to be before Satan came. There's not just a total restoration of man. But all of nature, the earth will be like the Garden of Eden. Where the land had been parched, there's going to be rivers that flow. It's going to be natural springs rising up. There's going to be pure water. Life will spring forth from the desert areas. Grass and plants will flourish in the desert. It's amazing what that millennium is going to look like. And then in verse 8, and a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk in that way. 
The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. This refers to the way leading the redeemed back to Israel. It's going to be a highway. A lot of people are going to be coming from around the world to Jerusalem. And that is where the throne, David's throne, will be. And Jesus, the Messiah, will sit on that throne, literally and spiritually. And people will come. People will come. Christ himself will be the leader of the way, the way for the Lord. Now, the straight and narrow path will still be there. But it'll be no problem to stay on that way. The temptation to sin will not be there because Satan will not be there. Providing, provided by God to his followers, it's going to be well marked. It's going to be holy. And all who walk on that road will be headed for eternity in heaven with God. The light of Jesus will light up the path that we are to walk. It's like the yellow brick road shining brightly. Jesus is that way. Jesus is the way. He is the way right now. He is the way right now to heaven. He is the way right now to salvation. He is the way right now to forgiveness. He is the way right now to eternal life. The world may think we are a fool, but you're going to be wise into salvation. The path is not a worldly one. The path is a righteous one. And by the way, Christianity wasn't called Christianity when it first started. It was called the way. The way of the Lord, or the way, in short. Acts chapter 9 talks about this, tells us that it was called the way. Uh, look with me, Acts chapter 9 verse 1. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. The way. We talk about the way in Isaiah. We have the way come to pass in Acts chapter 9, the way. Are you walking the way? If you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're on the path of the way. Uh, verse 9, no lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there. There's not going to be any ferocious beasts to threaten anybody's safety. Those traveling the highway of holiness can do so because there's no evil. The, the lion, the ravenous beast, uh, that's also people. People who try to derail you on your walk of the way. They're not going to be there. They're not going to be there. And then verse 10, it's the last verse of chapter 35. And those the Lord had rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. See, those who were part of that first resurrection, they're going to come. And those who became Christians during the Great Tribulation, they will come. And they will be singing. They're going to be entering Jerusalem singing with everlasting joy. And we get that in Revelation chapter 19, beginning in verse 1. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah, the smoke from her goes up forever and ever. Gladness is to replace sadness across the whole broad 
day and night and breadth and width of the earth. Everything is going to be restored during that great millennium. The greatest part of all this is that when the new heaven and the new earth come down, you're going to take part in a resurrection as well. And it's eternal life in a perfect place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, let us close with a word of prayer, but I encourage you to uh, read. Read Isaiah. Read Revelation. Read Acts. All those references I gave you, connect those dots. See how something written in 700 B.C., something written in 60 A.D., something written in 90 A.D., all connect to prove the truth. Uh, thank you for joining us today, and let us close with the word of prayer. Father, we just pray that you continue to guide us and lead us as we dive into your scriptures. And Father, we just pray that as we continue to read and connect dots, that you'll guide us and lead us and bring us to proper conclusions by the Spirit. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. And may we all go in peace.